Okay. Played enough for to not be rusty, I guess. <clears throat> I wanted to talk about the Spider Verse movie, Across the Spider Verse. I got to see it so many times. I think I know enough about the movie now, even though I haven't seen the first one still. But it's a great film. <laughs> Saw it eight times. And I saw it again today for probably the last time until it comes out. But it's definitely a timeless film and it's a good it's a good new fresh take on animation. Hopefully other companies adapt to it, but it doesn't really matter anymore. <laughs> well it was a great film. Just go check it out if you're into that sort of thing. It's worth your time. Didn't really check my watch or my phone or any of that. Well, more likely the watch. But I didn't get bored. And it's like more than two hours. So that was like a reaffirmation that still got an attention span. So that was great. But. It's funny, it's heartfelt, there's like some psychological takes to it, as far as the color palette, I could get into that, but overall it's, it's great, it's fantastic, it's amazing, it's a timeless film, it's a gem, just go check it out, and I guess for the gripes, I mean, of course, like every other movie, there's symbolism in there. I guess, uh, I actually looked up the, hold on. Let me... I turned on the stupid siren. So I guess the spot and the villain in the movie is called the spot. Um, I guess potential spoilers right here. Like I'm gonna talk about the movie, but I'll talk about more of the quality of the film too before I do so. But there's a villain in the film called the spot, and I guess he was actually made for the movie specifically. And when I found that out, I just <clears throat> that wasn't really surprising because it's such a resemblance to CERN. If you don't know about it now, there's a documentary on it. It's not that great, <laughs> but more people should know about it already. It's, it shouldn't be a secret anymore. It's pretty absurd that everybody doesn't know about it. It's the reason why time is speeding up. It's the reason why we see all these time paradoxes, multiverse, all this crap in the movies now. I'm sure you're getting sick of it. Uh, it's because something is going on. Um, like I said, I'll talk about the film after. The quality of the film, it's just... definitely has passion. There was definitely a lot of people that put some real effort into this movie. Shut up. Let me see. Totally turn it down. Okay. So I think it was about like two hours and a little over two hours and twenty. But definitely worth it. It's a breeze. It's one of those movies where it just flies by. Another movie I have uh, um, that I mean I could watch that all the time and it never gets old and. Every time you put it on, it just blows right by. But that's the goofy movie. It's just movies like that. Like you could tell, like they the rewatchability comes when you know that there was a lot of passion put into the film, or just in general, just you know, some type of collaborative 
some type of effort, you know. It's good stuff, and I appreciate it. It was a good piece of work. Every, like, second of that film, too, is like, you can use it as a screensaver, or it's just, man, it's, it's, it's really nice. It's just, it's eye candy for sure. It's just such a new, fresh take on, on animation for sure. Like, for the most, like, animation needs a comeback like desperately and I hope this this new uh, this new choice of, of uh, you know, like color palette and you know, just the way it's animated because I know it's it's a mixture of sorts it's it's a combination of the CGI using Maya Autodesk and like other other animation programs, probably Blender, I'm sure, and maybe Toon Boom, but just uh, I love stuff like that, like because <laughs> that's that's basically creating a new art form. Uh, but hopefully, more companies adapt to it. We'll see, because it's definitely bringing in the money. Because I know I know more people are being. They're they're finding out about it. They're hearing about it. The film, so they're they're actually seeing it during the week. Cause I was pretty crammed when I went to go see it. There's a lot of people. Um, it was a good time. Uh, human condition, man, for the most part, for well, however long we still have it. You know who who knows how long we'll have stories written by humans. But anyways, talk more about the film, I guess. Uh, the gripes, I guess I can mention. I've seen the movie enough times to where I noticed the majority of the propaganda that was inserted in the film and. I guess at this point, like, that's just at the click of a button. You could just easily insert that stuff, even in um, post-production. Yeah, it was pretty... Just maybe think, it's like, well, that's where we're going. Or it's actually where we're at. I noticed there's a Protect Trans Kids poster in Gwen's room. And that's a lot of the time when she has her moments of like existentialism, if you want to call it that. The color palette in the background, it just, it starts to almost deteriorate. And like almost as if it's like a sorrowful, what well, is a sorrowful moment, but you see the paint drip. And almost, I felt like it, it almost resembles like crying, a broken heart, a, a broken spirit, a, a lost, a lost soul, you know, a representation of, of sadness, of, uh, angst, of, uh, yeah. But I thought that was nice, um, it was a nice little fresh adult take, almost like innuendo if you want. Um, as far as, you know, given the sign that, you know, it's, like I said, it's a human condition, you know, everybody, it's universal. Everybody feels it as long as they have DNA. Um, and what else? The, I noticed too, the color palette, a lot of it, the majority of it was very light toned. And like I, you know, like I, um, I like colors and stuff, but I just felt like it's uh, that is like um, like the start of a slew of films to come. As far as adapting a new uh, <laughs> a new set of not colors, but just, I don't know, 
almost to where like it's like sissifying men for the most part because you think about it like like comic books in their origin like they were filled with primary colors you know bold colors you know those are like colors for men you know it's biased you know but it's true but I just thought that I mean I guess it's proper if you want to consider it uh, for a female to have that kind of background, you know, those those colors, I guess, but I don't know, I, I just thought that was different. Um, I mean, it, it was good scenes, there were good scenes, very heartfelt, gen- seemed genuine. Uh, I noticed, too, talking about genuine, genuineness, uh, I noticed there's a scene where Miles Morales' mom has a little talk with him. And it's kind of like uh, like the mom moment, you know, where she's letting her kid go, basically. When, I mean, it's not really... In this case, it's it's not really a big deal. He's still a teenager. He's still in high school. But they set it up to where it's some, you know... It's probably the biggest... Uh, Actually, no, I take it back. It's the second biggest uh, little talk in the film as far as, like, being emotional. And I guess in this sense, within the film, having a sense of morality. Because there are a lot of, there's a lot of deceptive uh, traits in this film. <clears throat> you know, I just mentioned... And again, don't shoot the messenger. You know, we live in different times just like I was saying you know there's a protect trans poster in Gwen's room there's a BLM pin on Miles' backpack I think he had that on the first one too I wouldn't know I haven't seen the first one still I need to watch it and there's oh there's also a Juneteenth poster in Miles' room uh also when Peter Parker is scrolling through his pictures of his baby Mayday Parker, I noticed the last picture, which is the third photo, has a very like you know, I I thought it was inappropriate and very like subtle that they they threw that in there. I felt like a little bit of a predatorial vibe. I didn't really care for it. I mean, the baby insert, that's, that was nice and everything. But, yeah, there's that. And then the fact that Peter Parker is actually portrayed in this film near the end. He shows up. And, you yeah, know, spoilers, by the way. I'm talking about the film now. And he shows up. And he's in a... Uh, and, and two, his baby, I felt like that was just a scapegoat for just being like, oh, okay, that's why he's got a robe on. But the robe essentially is pink. And I just felt like it was a stab at men in general um, and kind of like just shaming men. I mean, look look, look at the this woke quote ideology you know that we've been seeing constantly you know to adapt to some new absurd agenda that is totally irrelevant to you know being considerate of other people's lives and what they have to do in you know their own you know sort of ways to just get through life and yeah just I just felt like that was kind of blatant for me anyway, just because he he has that robe on the whole time. Like, he he has the robe on the whole time. I noticed that when I saw it today. I was like, wow, you do not see him just with his suit. And it's like, wow, well, you don't even see him on with the mask or with the mask on. And, uh... 
there was another uh, uh, moment where Miles is introduced to the Spider Verse and he starts seeing all the Spider People. And the first one, the first one, and again, you know, don't shoot the messenger. We're just in these in these times. The first one is, I think her name is, the character is Malala Windsor. I'm not sure though, but they had like little, like little miniature, like title cards, like as if, you know, little captions from a comic book or something, you know, giving off their title, who they are. And like, just like with a few, like they showed Spider Bite, they showed, oh yeah, they showed Scarlet Spider. That's another gripe I have. I was pretty upset how they portrayed him. I thought they made him into a freaking idiot. Um, I felt like that was kind of a stab at the fans too of Scarlet Spider-Man. And also too, as more of a slap in the face, they had a, what's his name, Andy Samberg voice him. I found that out just recently and go figure. He's a terrible voice actor. I don't, I'm not a fan at all of his voice work. He's a funny guy like Brooklyn Nine-Nine and stuff, but Hot Rod. But, like, yeah, he cannot voice act. He's terrible. He's he's the only reason why the Rescue Rangers movie wasn't as good as it was. And that, that movie was grand. It, it was fantastic. But with... if And then, uh, what was that other guy? John Mulaney or whatever that did ship? Both of them terrible voice actors for Chippendale. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. I won't get tired of saying it because that's my favorite cartoon. But anyways, getting aside from that and getting back on track. Yeah, in December, he sucks as a voice actor. So he ruined Scarlet Spider for me. But Scarlet Spider, he looks badass, as he always does. He's like the spawn of the Spider-Man world to me. In my opinion. Anyways, okay. But going back to this uh, Malala character, she was the first Spider-Man that was brought into the scene. And she says something like, has anyone spotted Spot? Or something like that. And then uh, Spider-Woman, she's just like, oh, very funny. Um, But she's like a Spider-Woman. She had like a hijab on, like a headscarf on. And I don't know, I just felt like that was like a real subtle take on that whole Sharia law that they were like subtly pushing, trying to make us like adhere to it and stuff like that because it's a belief system in its own and it's very radical and very extreme and I'm not with that, I ain't hip to that at all. Uh, I noticed that though. Uh, But I mean, you know... It's good natured, you know, it just passes by, you don't think anything of it. Uh, Yeah. Oh, and then Spider Woman is, is, uh, you know, as a kid, you have the whole, you know, suspension of disbelief and stuff like that. But, you know, if you want to talk about reality, you know, Spider Woman in this case, uh, her. Her ethnicity has changed for one, but what I was really like, I kind of like, I was just, I was surprised because it's just like, what, what purpose does it have? But I guess, I guess they're probably going to set that up for the sequel, but she's pregnant in the film (laughs) and she's riding a motorcycle. It's like, what is that giving off as far as vibes for the you know, the women, even the men, you know, who see that and they're just compelled to, or, I don't know, think that that's okay? Because I didn't, I didn't know that that's really a healthy decision to, you know, be pregnant and you have a pregnant lady on a, on a bike like that. But, I know, I know it's an animated film, but it's just like if you want to get into technicalities and stuff, because there's so much other stuff that was inserted into the film, it's like, hmm. But like I said, predictive programming, it's never going to stop. 
But, yeah, a lot of explosions. Oh. Spider-Punk and Spider-Man India. Showstoppers. They are the standouts. They're the best parts of the film. And if I had to choose, I would say Spider-Punk just because I'm more of a... I'm more of a fan of Spider Punk. Just because, um, you know, and going towards Spider Man India. Just because the character of Spider Man India isn't that interesting. And I just thought it was the dude that voiced, uh, um, what was it? Uh, shoot. I forgot what his name was in in uh, and I, I I his name strikes me too in in real life uh, actor, but he was the one in Deadpool where he took Deadpool everywhere, uh, like shoot I forgot his name, but he, the Indian dude, but funny dude oh my god but that was such a brilliant uh, cast choice for. For him to voice Spider-Man India, absolutely just spot on. And then uh, Daniel Kaluuya uh, for Sp- uh, Spider-Man, uh, uh, Spider-Punk. Um, yeah, those are just two excellent casting choices. Like whoever did that, they deserve a freaking raise. Like excellent, because you don't see that. Nowadays, it's very rare that you see actual actors that can just land a voice role so well to where it almost embeds that person, you know, the actor. And that doesn't happen every, you know, I just felt like that's, that's kind of like, uh, like lightning in a bottle type of deal. Like, can't do that all the time. Like, that, that doesn't always happen. But excellent casting choices. Um, yeah, I just I love that movie, man. Like, <clears throat> like I don't watch many movies anymore. But I grew up, of course, as every kid does, with Spider-Man. I think, as far as I can remember, like. He, Spider-Man was the first toy that I remember having, and it was like a, it was like a little, little tiny toy, like, like it was a, I think it was a Happy Meal toy, but just like a little red Spider-Man from the animated series thing, very small, like the size of your palm. And I remember I got it jacked at one of the like family parties and stuff that uh, my family went to one year. I think I was like about like five. Five or six, maybe, or maybe even seven at the most. But yeah, like that's as far as I can remember back. Like, like having toys in general, like that being my favorite. Ever also like that was another toy that I had. It was an Archer from the Small Soldiers movie. But anyways, yeah, like I always loved Spider-Man. Like I always, I grew up with the comics. Like, like I would. Like, even when I'd uh, be sick and stuff like that, I would read comics. And a lot of them, like, they were Spider-Man, uh, 90s Spider-Man comics. And, uh, yeah, I just I always had a, a real fondness for Spider- Spider-Man. I always thought he was the best superhero, even back in the day. Like, that whole deal about, like, who was better, like, Spider-Man or Batman? So that was the usual case, and it's just like a lot of the times, like people say Batman because people thought like Batman was more like manly, I guess. And it's like over time, like <laughs> Spider-Man's you know popularity only grew, and it still continues to even more so. And I, f- I feel also too a lot of that has to do with Stanley um, and Joan, of course. She was the one that. Gave him a healed that coarse heart that he had when he was uh, not with her, (laughs) 
but I had actually the honor of meeting him. He's a great man. Rest in peace, Mr. Lieber. Um, kind of getting off topic. Yeah, uh, definitely Spider Verse, like full price. I would, I would pay. Pre-order the the movie, like no problem. Like I, I did not have a problem. Like paying to go see the movie so many times, just because it's such a a fun time. If you got the time to spare. Uh, Yeah. It's good too if you're feeling down, like it'll definitely cheer you up. If you're in a mindset to be cheered up. Because I definitely laughed. <laughs> it was great. A lot, of, a lot of moments that made me smile. A lot of heartfelt moments. It's a very gripping film. It was definitely a good movie to see in 40X. It was really, that was really immersive. I noticed not every movie lands um, with the seat movements and stuff like this, but this movie is was a good match. It was a really good match. And then there's a, I would say like the best part of the, of the film is probably like around, it's like before the hour mark, it's like probably like 45 minutes in, there's a scene where Miles, it's kind of, it's weird too, it's just, I guess it's the excuse for making up for storytelling, uh, but it's, you know, it's it's really striking to look at, it's it's vivid, it's, it's vi- you know, vibrant and it was pretty, you know, all these colors and stuff. But there's a moment where Miles goes in his room and he puts on these, of course, Sony headphones. And he's, like, laying down, chilling, and, and trying to just blow off some steam. And he's listening to that Hummingbird song. And, like, I don't know how the heck that happens, but the song, it just starts playing. And... <laughs> Like, if some Twilight Zone stuff happens and, like, this portal just opens up in the ceiling of his room. It's like an orange portal. And, you know, just talking about that, it's like, mm, Masonic symbolism, I guess. Orange uh, and red hues of this big-ass portal. And it's a pentagon, by the way. (laughs) Um, It's above his head in his room on the ceiling and Gwen just happens to jump out of the portal and she's like looking at him before she's like staring down at him and like kind of like catches Miles off guard he's like like in his head like what the hell how did this happen and so like she does a front flip into like a you know onto his bed and stuff like that and they're all catching up and stuff and I guess Miles like had his uh, Gwen's like checking out his room and stuff, and I felt like that was another scapegoat um, as far as her like inspecting like his rooms. Like she's like asking him like, "Oh, this is where you grew up and stuff." And like I, I kind of noticed like up until it was definitely after the first viewing, but I was just like. I feel like that was like a subtle, like, sly little nod to the fact that that's shying away from the old morality of girls not being able to go into boys' rooms when they're visiting at a home, at their, you know, respected homes. Because I, I felt like that was totally wrong to, you know, insert that into a kid's film, because this is a kid's film. And, you know, to think that's okay, you know, whether you like me for saying that or not, you know, bottom line, it, that that has to do with mutual respect. And if you don't like it, you know, it's your own deal. I can care less. 
but I just thought, man, that, that was really, uh, that was really sly, really deceptive to put that in there. And they did it, you know, very well. You know, like I said, the whole movie lands. You know, it lands and it does a somersault. But I just thought that was, uh, yeah, maybe raise an eyebrow. So, there are things I can think about it. Oh, yeah, so after that, you know, asks him, you know, like, do you want to get out of here and stuff? And Miles tells her that he's grounded. And then almost like uh like a temptation you know well, not even almost it was you know like a like she's like acting like as a temptress and she's just like oh bummer and she, you know you just see her disappear and then she's just standing on the side of the of miles's wall you know in the air you know she's just she's spider gwen and stuff and she's like, can, or is Spider-Man grounded? And then so Miles just like looks at her and smirks. And then after that, it just cuts to a scene where basically, you know, Miles leaves. So it's like he ran away for, you know, a period. And so like you just see the parents and they knock on his door, find out that he's gone. And then... Miles' dad just said that's three months. And again, as I'm talking about it, more symbolism just fell. He said three months. Yeah, I mean, these films, boy. But yeah, he disobeyed his parents. And almost like the snake, you know, he went the way. He disobeyed, uh, but like I was saying, the best part of the film, it cuts to this part, and as far as like what I was saying about the 40x and stuff like that, the seat movements, it's like a, it's almost like an experience to where like it feels like you're you're web slinging with them, with Spider Gwen and Miles, Spider Man, and I just thought that was a joy. It was really fun. And, I mean, from a cinema standpoint, it was just really fun. But definitely the best part in the film, I thought, uh, as far as, like, just overall good time. And something I felt that it's never really been done before. This whole film has never been done before. That's why it should, it should break barriers. I mean, propaganda aside, you know... That's always going to be, you know, until the day we're dead. That's always going to be a deal. But these movies are always going to have these, you know, inserted little agenda, you know, driven, you know, things. <laughs> I don't know what else to consider them. But that's always going to be around. Always. But as far as the quality, it's just it's a very good time. I can't. I've said that so many times. And yeah, I don't. I don't know if I need to go on it too much. I think I talked about it pretty good. I I know that I've talked to. I talked to a few people like just when I was going to see it the many times that I saw it and. Um, I noticed a lot of people, they were upset about the the way the film ended. And it was a comic book ending. It was like a to be continued. And there's no post credit scene either. It's just like a Miles will return type of deal. But it doesn't surprise me because it's animation. It's like, no, it takes a long time. I mean, it took five years, more than five years to make this one. So it's like, it was well worth the effort. That's for sure. And I do not feel that even with the next one coming out, I don't feel that they're going to top this one. This is probably going to be the best film in this trilogy that they got coming. And probably the best animated 
picture since the Peanuts movie. Uh, I think I stand firmly on that. Because, you know, Blue Sky, they just... Their rendition of Peanuts, like, everything about, like, they just respected so much of that quality that that made, you know, peanut, continues to make it stand out to just be timeless. And that's what made this movie timeless. And I just felt that to be that, you need to, you need to be forthcoming and have some type of just acceptive, acceptedness to be collaborative and you make good works like this, like it's, it's it's great. But again, like I said, like there's always gonna be propaganda, little subtle jabs, like the eyeball on the comp on Gwen Stacy's composition book. <laughs> Just talking about it. Oh, there's an also um, there's a little stuffed penguin that with the like the two-way radio that is like for the cop police scanner or the police radio where they, you know, report the crimes and stuff like that. And that's in Gwen's room and she has a little two-way radio walkie-talkie thing and it's inside of a, a plushy penguin. And I was like, yeah, more symbolism. But I... Not sure. I think that's probably it. Oh, there was another thing too. Like it, it shows, like in a montage, that Miles he he caused the blackout. It was like yeah, more symbolism for those rolling blackouts that we'll probably be seeing later in the near future. But yeah, man, you haven't seen it? Go check it out if you want.